before we begin the review proper, um, I have a bit of a bone to pick that I need to talk about. So, for those of you that don't already know, I'm going through all these episode reviews by watching this DVD right here. The complete fourth season, all four discs. Now, there's one thing about this release that bugs the ever-living crap out of me. Let me explain. So, you know how the episode listing that you've been seeing here is... Let me think. How was Chimps Ahoy, Ghost Host, Will of a Birthday, and Karate Island? Well, actually, if we went in the order of the DVD, it would be Ghost Host wishing you well, and then Chimps Ahoy, Will of a Birthday, and Karate Island. Yeah, they, they got the episode listings backwards. Like, Wishing You Well is the final episode of disc number two. But according to the actual episode listing, it's dead center in the middle of disc three. So somehow, Nickelodeon botched up the actual order of the episodes when they released the DVDs. And you want to know how I know? I went to the Spongebob Wikia, which has the most accurate, up-to-date listing of every single episode of Spongebob in chronological order and sectioned by season, which is what I've been doing to go off of when doing these episode reviews. And most of the time, with like seasons 1, 2, and 3, for example, they all lined up with the actual listings on the episodes on the DVD releases. But for some stupid reason, on this one occasion, for season 4, they got the episode listings screwed up. I'm sorry, I, I just have to complain about that, because in order to watch the second episode for this review, I have to literally get up, take out the second, take out disc 3, put disc 2 back in, and go all the way back to the end of the first, of that second disc. Like, it's stupid! Like, that is so stupid! Ugh. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I, it feels like I'm nitpicking, I know, but... Seriously. That's gonna bug me. That's going to continue to bug me every time I rewatch this DVD. Okay. I got that piece out. Rant over. Now for the actual episode review, which may or may not get me roasted over an open fire for this one specifically, as this is one of the most hated episodes of not just season four, but arguably of all post-movie Spongebob. All that glitters, and I think that this episode is without a single doubt decent. <laughs> Now, hear me out before you get out your pitchforks and torches, okay? Let me explain. In this episode, Spongebob breaks his spatula and now has to find a replacement. But the replacement ends up doing nothing to help him and ends up actually making things worse. And it just goes on from there. Now, yes, this episode has a lot of problems. It is very mean-spirited. It very much drags, and Spongebob's crying is obnoxious. And at first, I was with all you thinking, oh, this is a garbage episode, this is a god-awful episode, one of the worst in the entire series. But then I watched a certain review online that actually put it into a different perspective. See, this is an episode about relationships and how cheating is wrong. Now you think that's just common logic, but considering how dumb most people in society are nowadays, yeah, the, that's not a bad thing to tell kids. Because we hear about, like, cheating and scandals all the time in the modern world, so having a cartoon episode that actually covers that in a way that's still understandable to kids is actually very admirable and I will give this episode that much and not to mention I was actually able to find two highlights for the episode because there are two legit really good moments 
The first one and this one is just so stupid it made me laugh. The first one was during the crying, you know, the whole crying bit at the beginning to stretch out the runtime. Patrick joins in out of nowhere for no reason for just a few seconds on the very last part of that montage. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, when he just walks up all calm with that smile on his face and he's like, <laughs> I can't help but crack a smile. Like, it's Patrick's only moment in the episode and it just makes me laugh. Like, it's stupid. It is a very stupid moment, but it is just so stupid that I can't help but laugh at it. And then the second one during the montage showing some of the memories that SpongeBob has made with Spat, his spatula, even though it's contradicted in season nine when the diary says he called it Fifi, whatever. We'll get to that stupid plot hole and that stupid, stupid episode when we get there. And one of the parts, specifically the last part of that memory montage, yeah, I know, a second montage, I know, really drags the episode, but it's not that bad, is that there he fights a pirate. It, it's random, it doesn't have anything to do with the story, but it's a funny visual, seeing him fight a pirate that's armed with a cutlass sword with his spatula, especially the way he wins with able to get the sword's blade through one of the spatula holes and just whipping him off over a cliff. <laughs> like, that's cool. It's stupid. It doesn't have anything to do with the story, but it's cool. And yes, this episode is slow. This episode drags and this episode is full of problems. But again, look at it from the perspective of attempting to teach kids about a very serious topic without going overboard or getting the censors up their rear end. Even Sesame Street tried to do an episode sort of like that, and that episode got banned. And it's the only banned episode of Sesame Street. Well, to an extent. So, yeah, look at it from that perspective, and less of how it is as it's just an overall episode. Because as an overall episode, if you look at it without the context, it is pretty bad. It is hard to sit through. But if you look at it through the lens of trying to do something admirable and teach kids about a serious topic without, you know, going overboard or having the censors having to step in, that's admirable. And I give the SpongeBob team credit for trying to do that. But unfortunately, back then, people just didn't get it, and it has been hailed as one of the worst episodes of the series, which... Yeah, I don't understand. It's not a great episode, no. It's nothing more than decent, but... It's an admirable effort. And I will give them that much. So... Final verdict for this episode is going to be a controversial 6 out of 10. It's a decent episode. It has a good message behind it. It just falters in execution. SpongeBob's crying is obnoxious. But... You get around that, it's a decent episode. I've seen better, but there's also way, way worse. So, yeah. Not as bad as most people say, but it's not amazing by any means. Do you know what is an amazing episode? Wishing you well. Why don't we go ahead and move over to that one before you guys come at me with pitchforks, shall we? I love this episode. <laughs> this is... One of my absolute favorites from this season, and a lot like Krusty Towers, it's the one I keep getting confused for being in season three, because it feels like a season three episode. It feels like a pre-movie episode. It's very well written, very well acted, very well put together, very well story-wise, and just so, so funny and memorable. Like, I love this episode so much. I have so much to say about it, so let's not waste any time and dive right in. In this episode, Mr. Krabs makes a wishing well in another attempt to, you know, steal money from people because it's Mr. Krabs, that's his character, he steals money, haha. -ha. And he sends Spongebob down there to get the money out of the well after the well is dug. And then Spongebob ends up finding the magic and hilarity and craziness ensues. This is a great episode for just so many reasons. I only have two highlights, but... It's really because there were just so many great moments that 
it would take forever to list every single one of them. But one I will mention is when the mom smacks Krabs upside the head with his with her purse twice. <laughs> like, oh, okay, I get it. If I can't have it, no one. <laughs> I hope he throws all his college savings down a hole. <laughs> That's a brave funny one. And then there's also the whole scene with Squidward in the well with Spongebob and Patrick. Like, hey, you're stepping on my foot. Oh, sorry, Spongebob. And you got my, your elbow in my ribs. Ow. <laughs> but the two highlights I have are really good parts. The first one, the obvious one, is the song. Like, it's a very short song, but it's a very good song. You just have to listen to it. It's such a good song. And it always makes me laugh on the part where Patrick just pulls a shovel randomly out of his pants. <laughs> that part will never stop making me laugh, especially with that goofy grin he has on his face when he does it. Like, it's so funny. Patrick is great in this episode. And then the second one is the ending, when the wishes all start coming true and Mr. Krabs decides to test it by doing this. I wish I was steamed and served with a side of melted butter. And it ends up coming true and that's how it ends. And the literal V end title card appears as the little handkerchief that the dude's about to eat Mr. Krabs has on his, around his neck. Like, that's the goofy, funny dork humor that SpongeBob nails so frequently, especially with these first four seasons. Like, it's uh, it's so hard to explain why this episode is so great. You just really need to see it for yourself. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Mm. But yeah, this is really a great episode. But one other moment I will talk about is the part where Squidward and Patrick end up fighting in the wishing well. And Smudge was like, you can't fight in here. This is a magical place. And immediately my mind's just like, hey, it's modern Disney. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a cheap shot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, I don't know why my mind immediately went to that. It just suddenly popped in my head while I was just rewatching it. Like, I'm sorry, that's a cheap shot, I know, but it's it, just, it made me laugh. <laughs> Fun for this episode is a 9 out of 10. It's a great episode. It's so close to being amazing. If only the ending didn't feel so rushed. Like, the ending is great, but it just feels like it moves by too quickly. Because they spent so much time with SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward all at the bottom of the wishing well. But you know what? Nitpicks, man. Nitpicks. This is a great episode. A fantastic episode. You guys need to check it out if you haven't already. And we're getting down to the end of this marathon because I think we only have about eight reviews to go as well as, I think, either eight or six Aquatic Neptune reactions to go as well. So we're getting close to the end of the month and I just want to say it's been a lot of fun and I've really loved just telling you guys about how much I love this season and just... How much it still perplexes me that people consider this a bad season with all these gems that are scattered throughout. Like, this is pretty much me explaining to you, review by review, why I think this season is so underrated and deserves to be up there with the classics. It's such a fun, excellently done season. And considering the circumstances around its development... It's a very admirable effort. So, yeah. This one was a lot of fun. I had a great time watching it, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy this episode as well. So, I'll see you guys next time for the Aquatic Neptune Pool Party.